Kim Jong-un, he and I have a very good relationship. People would say, it's not good to have a good relationship. Yeah, it's very good to have a good relationship. It really is. But he's not so happy with uh, Biden. He says bad things about Biden. Donald Trump doesn't have a good relationship with anybody who is just normal, you know, just regular people, whether they be politicians or world leaders. The only people he really takes an interest in are fascists, extremists, dictators, autocrats, the likes of Kim Jong-un, somebody he feels that he has a very good relationship with, or whether it be Viktor Orban of Hungary, or whether it be Vladimir Putin of Russia, or Xi Jinping of China. He really does like to pick his uh, you know, enemies of the United States very carefully, doesn't he? It's like if they're an enemy, you can guarantee they're going to be friends with Trump. And the reason for this is because anybody who is a, a serious kind of Western ally does not take and has never taken Donald Trump seriously as a president because he's an imbecile. And they know that. They recognize from the first time he opened his mouth that this was a guy that they probably couldn't do business with. And there are many moments during Trump's presidency where you saw European leaders kind of huddling and pointing and joking and how he at the G8 summit, for example, decided to like push past people to try and show the uh, might of the American president. I mean, tragic things, tragic behavior to have with your with your allies. But, you know, to hear him talk about Kim Jong-un in this kind of bromancy way, you know, there's something very unsavory about this relationship because it, it sounds like he's never really had a relationship with anybody. You know, if he thinks that that relationship with Kim is a, is a good relationship, it's a positive relationship, it just exposes how few friends Donald Trump really has and how he really does not understand the, the intricacies of, of, a, of a relationship between two humans who have a connection. He claims he has a connection with a guy who, who does not speak English, so he's only ever communicating through a translator, and because he gave him a CD of Elton John Rocket Man, and, and because Kim Jong-un has given him, written him like nice letters, he, he presumes that, that they've got this kind of connection, and it makes no sense. It just makes zero sense. And it also proves, and I think most importantly, that Donald Trump is not on the side of the United States, and he never has been. He's just on the side of Donald Trump. He's like, vote for me, and then relations, relations with North Korea will be better because Kim's a friend of mine. And the same with Russia and Putin and China and Xi. I mean, this is how he operates. He thinks that because they are his like, special people, that that is the safety that the world needs, you know, just befriend these people. I mean, I wonder why previous presidents didn't think of this before. Oh, well, I'll just befriend the enemy and then they'll never attack us. Does he think that that's like the extent of international diplomacy and relations? I mean, is that as far as the imbecile brain is able to go? Well, just befriend them and then they'll never attack us. I mean, maybe he's got a point. Maybe the rest of us have been missing something. Maybe it is really as simple as that. Just, you know, be, be friends with the most evil people who have a terrible human rights record, who uh, steal land and, and, and territory and take it as their own and uh, kill people that don't follow them and, and like to stay in power forever. I mean, is, 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 is that the kind of person you want to have as a friend? So I really recognize every time that Trump opens his mouth to talk about international relations that he is not representing the United States. And when he says that Kim Jong-un is not a friend or a fan of Joe Biden, 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 he kind of likes to say it in this weird way, like he's creating this new language, the language of Trump. He fails to recognize is that it's not about being friends with Biden. It's about the country. Biden just happens to be the president at the moment, representing the country. And, you know, if, if Biden hands the baton to somebody else, Kamala Harris, for example, Kamala Harris is representing the country. It's not for her to befriend an enemy. It's about diplomacy. It's about managing these relationships at a, at a very high level, involving diplomats and people who are experts. It's not about allowing the, 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 the leader to go into a room, a secret room, as Trump did with Vladimir Putin, and have a private conversation with nobody there to witness it. That's treason. And so understanding that 
Kim Jong-un doesn't like Biden is a, a very, I mean, we, you could have told me that, right? That's a very simple thing. It's not really the issue. It's about the United States of America. And Trump doesn't seem to understand that it's an entire country containing 330 million people that is at stake, not just him and his personal relationship with Kim Jong-un. The idea that Trump could become the president again and put us at danger, put us at the, you know, under the threat of a, of a nuclear holocaust, that's not something I want to stick around for. And I'm sure that you don't either. So here we are again. Just when we thought that you know Trump was about to meet a sticky end legally, he's now parading the fact that he has all this prestige on the world stage, and he is a serious contender to go up against Joe Biden in 2024. I'm Anthony Davis. You can hear me every day on the Five Minute News podcast and on Sundays on the weekend show with Midas Touch.